स्टैंड अप कॉमेडियंस ट्राई एंड प्रोजेक्ट वॉट मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया ऑल्सो प्रोजेक्ट दैट जय श्री राम इज लाइक अ वॉर चैंट एंड इट इज यूज टू ओप्रेस डिमोनाइज एंड टेरोराइज हिंदूज एनीबडी हु कैरीज अ सैफरन फ्लैग इज डेंजरस Uh, a bhakt roommate according to a stand up comedian must be slapped because he is a bhakt and he supports a particular political party any hindu who opposes beef consumption is a militant um, is a terrorist and uh, they must be uh, stood up against fairly new kind of a challenge because every society has had certain prescriptions and proscriptions because every society needs for its stability certain kinds of rules and that's why we have the dharma shastra so for example right these traditions really say ha ah, what can you do what can you not do and in what context Namaste and good evening to all the viewers that have joined us today. Welcome to another episode of Sangam Talks. I am Ojasvi Mishra, who will today be conducting the talk that has been deeply researched by our speakers today, which is titled "Representation of Hindus and Hinduism in Indian Stand-Up Comedy." The talk will examine the complex relationship between humor and religion through the prism of Indian stand-up comedy and its representation of Hindus and Hinduism. The speakers that we have today begin with Professor Ramesh Rao ji, who is a professor of communication studies at Columbus State University, having worked in India briefly as a bank officer, a school teacher, and a copy editor for a major newspaper. He earned a PhD in communication from Michigan State University. He is the editor of India Facts as well. Followed by him, we have Dr. Nidhi Shendulnikar ji. who is an assistant professor in the faculty of journalism and communication in the maharaja sayaji rao university of baroda she has a, a close to a decade of teaching experience and research experience in the field of media and communication studies she is interested in research and teaching of indic perspectives we also have avinash brahmabhat ji who is an alumnus of the faculty of journalism and communication at the maharaja sayaji rao university of baroda gujarat He is a passionate policy consultant, a budding strategist. He is interested in researching, writing about dharmic issues. And then, lastly, we have Ruthvi Dattani ji, who is a marketing strategist and an independent media columnist. She has worked with outlets like Swaraj and Outlook India in the past. She is keenly interested in exploring Indic narratives vis-a-vis contemporary events. I welcome all of our speakers and I request you to take over and uh, help us understand the research and the essence of it. Namaste, everyone. Thanyavad uh, Ojasvi ji for the kind introduction. And before I hand it over to my co-presenters, Ruthvi Dattani and Avinash Prambhat. who will navigate uh, us through today's topic uh, through the presentation uh, i would just like to provide a very brief backdrop uh, to this research paper that we presented in germany last year in a conference in germany august 2023 the conference was on metaphor and misinformation religion in media driven worlds and we have basic, basically tried to understand the complex and interesting relationship between religion and popular culture with a focus on hindus and hinduism in indian stand up comedy the study started as a student project in 2021 and it culminated with us presenting this paper in a conference at rar university in germany uh, to take us through the presentation today we have ruthvi dattani and avinash prambhat our talk is divided into two sections Ruthvi will provide a brief backdrop and introduction to the interesting intersection between religion and humor and Avinash will talk about our study results so i hand it over to Ruthvi and Avinash and uh, thank you all for joining this interesting talk and i hope that there will be a lot of questions as we go through and collectively we will be happy to answer any questions that you have 
thank you ma'am and thank you so much for the warm welcome and the introduction ojasvi ji we are pleased and delighted to be sharing the findings of this research on sangam talks today let me offer a brief introduction to what the paper is about although stand up comedy traces its origin in the vaudeville theater in the united states since the late 19th century it is now one of the most popular art forms shaping political discourses and narratives across the globe uh, so in light of the relationship shared between humor and religion one that is constituted by political undertones we examine the projection of hindus and hinduism from the year 2015 to the year 2021 for 52 stand up comedy routines in india the study was initially conceived as a student project in the faculty of journalism and communication in the maharaja sayaji rao university of baroda in the year 2021 and later our team of four so professor ramesh rao dr nidhi chandurnikar avinash brambhat and myself uh, transformed it into a full fledged academic pursuit uh, we went on to presenting the paper as dr nidhi mentions at the international society of media religion and culture conference in bochum germany in august 2023 today i will be discussing the history and evolution of humor in ancient indian and the western socio cultural context my co presenter avinash will discuss the data the analysis and the findings and thereafter uh, dr shendur nikar and professor rao will be offering their comments so the sanskrit word hasya which stands for joy laughter and humor is one of the nine rasas one of the nine emotions in bharat muni's natya shastra an ancient hindu text on drama theater and performing arts uh, natya shastra is estimated to have been composed around 500 years before common era and holds that theater is a democratizing space where conversations take place so which is why humor is seen as a predominant emotion in indian traditional theater and is evoked by the use and display of unusual jewelry deranged clothing impudence and incoherent speech a uh, pramath is recognized as the god of humor in hinduism or the deity associated with comic sentiment so both humor and the use of comic effect are considered important ingredients of the hindu storytelling culture and the indian traditional theater uh, although uh, this is something that uh, a number of contemporary stand up comedians also acknowledge in their interviews they do largely borrow from their western counterparts and from the american comedians Uh, given how western pop culture has been shaping attitudes and beliefs over the years uh, so author lee siegel in his 1987 book titled laughing matters comic tradition in india says how writes how he is startled at india's ancient india's ability and courage to laugh at itself its flaws and its experiences which no other civilization has the capability to do so it Uh, it, he says that india embraces humor as a cultural and a civilizational phenomenon now the beginnings of stand up comedy a uh, stand up comedy routines can be traced in the united states a uh, united states vaudeville theater in the late 19th century the first person to simply stand up and tell jokes without any accompanying distractions was frank fay who was known for advocating anti semitism but he is yet credited with transforming the stand up comedy scene throughout the world so and th this helps us understand that increasingly the role of humor was seen beyond offering entertainment a uh, present day comedy routinely challenges hegemonic ideas questions the status quo stigma and prejudice it is seen as a form of advocatorial art and uh therefore it is now deeply connected with the ideas of political activism and social justice uh, several authors also align this concept with uh, the ancient greece uh, terminology of parisia which literally translates to free speech 
so they they view stand up comedy as an avenue and as a medium where young people can contest discriminatory practices and express free speech for instance the monty python group of comedians in 1970s in the britain television are seen poking fun at the british monarchs and the vatican pope using dark humor and absurdist content in spite of which they are met with good and positive spirit but humor targeted at religion has not always received the same treatment from all quarters of the society and has not stood the testament of time so uh, this becomes evident from instances like the banning of salman rushdie's novel satanic verses in 1988 where his satirical take on islam is considered blasphemy similarly a 2012 bbc sitcom citizen khan invited the issuance of hundreds of fatwas offending for offending religious sentiments and recently in 2015 uh, prophet muhammad's depiction in the charlie hebdo magazine invited terror attacks uh, leading to 12 people being gunned down and 11 others being injured If we particularly look at the Indian stand-up comedy scene, a 2015 Being Indian report says that comedy in earlier times was considered a filler. It was prominently used as a filler in music shows and stage performances, and comedians did not command the fame and respect that is being accorded to them now. So, uh, although Indian television did have a number of shows. and did earn popularity because of its witty and relatable humor indian comedians did not have a dominant presence outside the television so the dynamic has largely changed and we now see that stand up comedy is no more just considered an art form but is now a huge industry with massive commercial value so contemporary stand up comedy is known to have started with veer das who performed at smaller clubs in the united states and then became one of the most successful indian stand up comedians in english generally speaking the stand up comedy scene has positioned itself as resistance and an anti establishment space uh, since the rise of the bharatiya janata party in 2014 consequently we see that comedians who gain prominence and limelight due to their remarks on religion include veer das kunal kamra uruj ashfaq sorab pant tanmay bhat among others and the prominent themes that feature in indian stand up comedy routines are religious intolerance majoritarianism and the otherization of minorities so from the standpoint of its relationship with religion indian stand up comedy is being routinely called out for its verbosity disproportionate biased and hypocritical treatment meted out to hindus hindu gods and the hindu way of life indian stand up comedians are also being called out for employing the same framework that the west uses to discredit hindus and to target hindus so anything that becomes a subject or a target of humor in the west also naturally is becoming a target of humor in india and whether whether this is something that this study precisely tries to investigate is uh, whether indian stand up comedy landscape normalizes hindu phobia or not i will briefly explain what is hindu phobia as a concept before avinash takes over and answers this question so although the term hindu phobia was first used in 1866 its recent use is credited to independent academic scholar rajiv malhotra and a london based group called hindu human rights a uh, hindu human rights defines hindu phobia as irrational hatred of hindus and uh, can include physical psychological psychological or other kind of attacks on hindus it could include a set of claims that portray hindus and hinduism in negative light for example uh, the terminology such as a religion that is oppressive and regressive and it deliberately ignores the positive and progressive aspects of hinduism so the spread of hindu phobic narratives are attributed to various influences a uh, first being the invasion of india by islamic forces second british colonization and imperialism and third 
the nature of Indian nation state post independence. So the Western approach and the Western lens has broadened the disconnect of people from their civilizational history, ethos and practices is what Hindu phobia holds. For instance, one stand-up comedian, his name is Vishnu Vaka. He says in one of his stand-up comedy acts, he says that being a Hindu, there are two ways of leading my life. Either I be a sannyasi or I be a samsari. And uh, when I say that I am a samsari, I get married, I have kids and I lead a regular life. But if I am a sannyasi, all I have to do is get high on drugs and think about God. And then he says that we have 30 million gods. Hindus have 30 million gods. And every time someone gets high, we have a god. This is the joke and the audience is seen bursting out laughing. The scathing attack on poly polytheism or the polytheistic nature of Hinduism is, is being normalized uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So the diversity of beliefs and faiths are regularly looked down upon and monotheistic religions are claimed to be superior in several stand-up acts and in pop culture in general. Uh, here, Hindu phobia is also referred to as Hindu dvesh, which denotes the repulsion of Hindus. And Hindu phobia can be of two types. So one could be blatant and explicit, and another could be implicit, where the content is being catered in a manner that the audience con consumes it without realizing uh, that Hindu phobia is being peddled. Uh, for example, uh, again, in one of the stand-up comedy acts, uh, Hindu scriptures are compared to Wikipedia pages, that Hindu scriptures are like Wikipedia pages and the audience applauds that. Uh, one would not realize the nature of Hindu phobia here because it is implicit when one draws an analogy between Hindu scriptures and Wikipedia pages. It has long been known that Wikipedia pages are discredited for providing information that is either dubious, baseless, or misleading. And when the same treatment is given to Hindu scriptures, the, relig the existence of the religion is being discredited, that of Hindu gods itself and the Hindu way of life. So there are several different ways through how Hindu phobia gets catered. And in order to assess the presence of Hindu phobia in its entirety, uh, we used the coding framework developed by Professor Vamsi Juluri, uh, where he, wherein he provides several categories and several tropes. And we analyzed the data based on this framework. Uh, Avinash will further be presenting the data and the analysis. Thank you, Rutvi. Taking forward, so when we uh, did a systematic study of the stand-up acts, the stand-up uh, uh, jokes by the stand-up comedian we found are generic and broad statements, projecting Hindu dharma it practices and beliefs as illogical. Matlab Sanatan dharma ko tarkhin aur vivek rahit prakshepit kiya jata hai. Iske saath in stand-up jokes mein santo, dharmik vyakti ho, samuhu aur dharmik pratha ho par tippani ki gai hai. यहां आज की ये हाइपर मॉडर्न जनरेशन से एक आर्गुमेंट आना स्वाभाविक है कि जोक्स शुड बी टेकन एज जोक आई हैव अ काउंटर क्वेश्चन फॉर देम आर दिस जोक्स रियली मेड विद एन इंटेंट टू जोक और एंटरटेन लाइक एक साधारण सा उदाहरण देता हूं अभी रिसेंटली एक स्टैंड अप कॉमेडियन रोहित मेनन इन एन एक्ट जोक्ड अबाउट काउस बीइंग वर्शिपड एज भगवान बाय हिंदूज he said, I eat beef. Ye log beef nahi khate kyunki bhagwan hai vagera vagera. Main sirf pooch raha hu ki agar tum beef khate ho, to now the God is inside you. Doesn't that make you much closer to God? And if you shit after eating beef, then usi ko to log holy shit kehate hai. Was this joke actually intended to entertain? Or was it uh, an insult to the belief of half a billion, like a billion Hindus? So thus this has been the stance of a all the jokes we have listed and analyzed, humor has always been part of uh, Bharatiya culture, no doubt. But in the highly connected world, when opinions and perception of masses are formed by the mass media, stand-up comedy as a medium of mass communication should be wisely used wisely. Uh, the nature that is narratives of these jokes in the stand-up acts revolves around questioning Hindu beliefs, mocking Hindu deities and symbols, projecting Hindu rituals and festivals as ir irrational. So, Bhavik hai, jab aap apni aastha ko sarvajanik uh, charcha mein ek manch se harsha ka muddha bante dekhte hai, 
तब आप भी अपनी आस्था का तिरस्कार या अस्वीकार करेंगे क्योंकि आपको एक भय रहेगा कि मैं भी हास्य का मुद्दा बन सकता हूँ एक्सप्लेनिंग विद सिंपल एग्जाम्पल इमेजिन क्लासरूम सिनारियो वेर टीचर आस्क अ क्वेश्चन टू अ स्टूडेंट Even if the student gives the correct answer, sometimes to the teacher might falsely claim it is wrong to test the student's confidence. Now, if the same question is posed to another student, they might hesitate to answer at all, and uh, he will not even uh, think of uh, saying the same answer, fearing that he might be labelled incorrect or uh, laughed at. Similarly, when Hindus' uh, beliefs are ridiculed and mocked uh, on a stage, they become the subject of laughter. causing people to distance themselves and disowning their own culture believing it to be wrong even if it is right this detachment from their cultural root can be can have a lasting effects not limited to this the stand up like acts mock the valor of hindu warriors the glorious history of bharat is questioned while the colonial history of british and mughal era is justified ignoring the suffering persecution and brutality hindu knowledge and traditional uh, traditions are misrepresented and misinterpreted and hinduism is presented again i'm using the word presented privileged and advantages than other faiths hindu dharma ko dusre religion ki tulna mein visheshadhikrut prastut kiya jata hai taki jab keval aapki bhavana aur aur aastha ka mazak bane tab aapko apamanjanak na lage kyunki aapke antarman mein yah bithaya gaya hai ki aapko visheshadhikar prapt hai to aapka mazak banana uchit hai so such are the prominent narratives on hindus and hinduism popularized in indian stand up comedy space Now, with some examples and explanation, I will elaborate on the uh, prominent tropes employed to tickle the funny bones at the expense of Hindu sentiments. We will understand how the world's oldest belief system, Hinduism, has transformed into a hilariously marketable product in the Indian stand-up comedy space. The most relevant trope um, uh, that is mistranslation, uh, mis the negation of symbol and icon, cultural appropriation, is employed by eighty-three percent of the act. In one instance. Sulin Kaur, a female comedian, labelled the followers of Iskon tradition as porn addicts simply with the logic that the name Iskon rhymes with the word porn. Mazak me bhi ek Hindu pant ki aisi nakaratmak tulna Hinduo ke baare me na keval galat vicharo ko badhava deti hai, par unko sarvajanik sthano par hasya ka mudda ya tiraskar ka shikar banati hai. Yaha tak ki is stand up act me यह महिला हास्यकार ने ऋषि मुनि और हिंदू के लिए अनुचित शब्द का प्रयोग भी किया था जो मैं यहाँ नहीं बोल सकती भगवान गणेश को विघ्नहता के रूप में हिंदुओं द्वारा पूजा जाता है और उनकी विशेषता हाथी के सिर वाला उनका स्वरूप है इस हास्यकार ने भगवान गणेश के हाथी के सिर वाले स्वरूप को प्लास्टिक सर्जरी गलत है या डिज्नी द्वारा प्रस्तुत हिंदू धर्म कहकर मजाक उड़ाने का प्रयास किया इट शुड बी नोटेड दैट दिस जोक वाज मेड ऑन एन इंटरनेशनल प्लेटफॉर्म इन सैन फ्रांसिस्को विदेशी भूमि पर एक शो में जहां हिंदुओं का इतिहास जानने वाले लोग शायद ही होंगे वहां इस प्रकार का मजाक क्या उन लोगों के लिए अपमानजनक नहीं है जो दिन में दस बार श्री गणेश बोलकर अपना काम करते होंगे जब एक मूल भारतीय अपने इतिहास और देवताओं का अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर पे मजाक बना सकता है और अपमान करता है तो वहां बैठे विदेशी जनता को क्या वो यह संदेश नहीं दे रहा कि सनातन धर्म तर्कहीन है और भारतीय लोग प्रिमेटिव है तीसरा उदाहरण है कॉमेडियन कैनी सबेस्टियन का जो जिनको दिवाली से शायद कोई लेना देना नहीं है पर दिवाली और हिंदू धर्म के नव वर्ष पर फूटने वाले फटाखों से अत्यंत समस्या है इसीलिए वो दिवाली पर फूटने वाले फटाखों को अदर शिट कह के संबोधित करते हैं और यहाँ तक कि इनकी मुताबिक दिवाली पर फटाखे फोड़ना तर्कहीन है और फटाखे फोड़ना वाले लोगों को चांटा मारकर रोकना चाहिए मे बी दिस वॉज अ जोक एंड अ कॉमिक स्टोरी इन द ऑडियंस टू वुड हैव लाफ्ड आउट अवेवर कैनी सबेस्टियन ही कन्वीनियंटली इग्नोर द नॉइज एंड पॉल्यूशन कॉज बाई फायर वर्क ड्यूरिंग a uh, grand celebration and tournaments this uh, and uh, during other phase uh, faith's uh, religious celebration this selective criticism and cultural appropriation of hinduism raises question about environmental concerns and the freedom to joke about faith as it seems to be driven by uh, a bias against the hindu community and hinduism यहाँ सब देखकर ऐसा लगता है कि पर्यावरण के प्रति इन हास्यकारों की चिंता और किसी की आस्था पर मजाक करने की आजादी तब भी उभरती है जब वह मुद्दा हिंदू समुदाय और हिंदू धर्म का हो सो दिस वेर द्री एग्जाम्पल्स हाउ इन स्टैंड अप कॉमेडी हिंदुज्म इज मिस ट्रांसलेटेड रिलीजियस सिम्बल्स एंड आइकन आर डेनिग्रेटेड एंड कल्चरल अप्रोप्रिएशन इज प्रमोटेड द सेकेंड मोस्ट रिलेवेंट रोप 
that is insult to deities reception of symbols their festivals religious and cultural practices was also found in 83 percent of the acts so in like one stand-up comedy alokesh Shinha compares the hanuman chalisa one of the most sacred hindu prayer recited daily by half a billion hindus in india to an ineffective antiseptic so yaha vichar karna mahatvapoorn hai ki kya lakho hindu ki dharmik bhavnao ki kimat chand hasi ke samne shunya hai another instance involves a comedian atif mohammed aziz mocking the ram mandir and its movement yaha hasya kalakar kehta hai ki ram lalla aayenge image ka yahi banayenge अपने धार्मिक स्थलों को पुनः प्राप्त करने के लिए संघर्ष में अपनी जान गवाने वाले हिंदुओं द्वारा किए गए बलिदानों को अनदेखा कर मंदिर की तुलना एक मनोरंजन पार्क से की गई है वेल मॉकिंग सच जोक्स द कॉम्बिडेंट टेंस टू इग्नोर द सफरिंग इन परसिक्यूशन ऑफ हिंदूज इन देर ओन लैंड सो इन दर्ड एग्जाम्पल कॉमेडियन एलेक्जेंडर बाबू मेड सेक्शुअलाइज रेफरेंस टू गॉडेस माँ पार्वती It is worth noting that among the major religion in the world, Hinduism stands out in worshiping female uh, deities and recognition of feminine divinity. सभी धर्मों में जहाँ हिंदू धर्म देवियों की पूजा करने में अलग पहचान रखता है, वहाँ हिंदू देवियों का मजाक एक एक सामूहिक लोक मंच से खुद के लाइक खुद को हास्य कलाकार कहने वाले बनाते हैं. On one hand, when the world has taken its first step towards feminism and is talking about women rights, at the same time there is Hinduism. Which has been talking about feminine power and worshiping Shakti since yugas. So this was the three examples how in stand-up comedy, uh, deities are being insulted in the form of jokes. Uh, the third most prominent uh, trope identified is erasing mocking Hindu views of Indian history. So in one example, stand-up comedian again Alexander Babu equates Hindu scriptures to Wikipedia, thereby diminishing the depthness and richness of the sacred text. Uh, this comparison not only undermines the vastness of Hindu scriptures, but also questions uh, their accuracy in relation to Wikipedia pages. जैसे Wikipedia से जानकारी प्राप्त करने पर विश्वसनीयता संदिग्ध हो सकती है क्योंकि वहाँ किसी भी विषय पर कोई भी लिखित जानकारी संबंधित कर सकता है। वैसे ही हिंदू ग्रंथों की Wikipedia से तुलना लेकर उनकी सत्यता पर हास्य की परछाई में सवाल उठाया जाता है इन द शेडोज ऑफ स्टैंड अप कॉमेडी द ऑथेंटिटी ऑफ हिंदू स्क्रिप्चर्स इज क्वेश्चन विद कंपेरिजन टू विकिपीडिया अनदर एग्जाम्पल इन वॉल्स वीरदास रिफरिंग टू हिंदू पोलिज्म एज एवेंजर्स बाई हिंदुइज्म लाइक मॉकिंग द बिलीव इन मल्टीपल डेटीज बाई लिंकिंग हिंदू गॉड्स टू कॉमिक बुक कैरेक्टर्स हिंदू धर्म के लोग सूर्य देव चंद्र देव समुद्र देव ऐसे तैतीस कोटि देवताओं की पूजा करते हैं इस विविधता को कॉमिक बुक के पात्रों से देवी देवता की तुलना की गई है शायद हास्य कलाकार महोदय वीरदास यह कहना चाहते हैं कि कॉमिक बुक कैरेक्टर की तरह हिंदू देवी देवता काल्पनिक है और वास्तविकता से इसका कोई संबंध नहीं है फर्दर मोर देर इज एन इंस्टेंस वेर कुनाल कामरा मॉक्स हिंदू फॉर एक्सप्रेसिंग कंसर्न अबाउट प्रोसिक्यूशन वाई क्लेमिंग दैट हिंदू आर इन नॉट इन डेंजर बट देर रेदर द लॉजिक इज इन डेंजर Like comedy, comedian dismisses the legitimized, the legitimate threat faced by Hindus from various forces. Such mockery undermines the reality uh, of challenges faced by the Hindu community across the globe, from persecution of Hindus in Pakistan, Bangladesh, or be it with the most recent in Sandesh Kali, West Bengal. Such comedians bravely jokes about Hindus being illogical or being vocal about their persecution, but comedian lacks courage. to speak when it comes to hindu right this shows a clear bias in their opinions so these are uh, the three examples of how hindu history and views are mocked and systematically erased calling them illogical to stand up acts the fourth prominent trope identified in analysis is the projection of hindus as lacking self control engaging in irrational actions and being superstitious so a female comedian radhika vas asserts that uh, hindus have not evolved simply because women observes the auspicious fasting tradition called karwa chauth so this fasting is labeled as irrational and superstitious it's worth noting that fasting is a spiritual practice observed in numerous religions across the world but it is called out irrational when it comes to hindus yahan tak ki yah mahila hasyakar ne karwa chauth ke liye ek abhadra shabd ka prayog kiya tha Uh, वो भी एक सार्वजनिक मन से जो मैं यहाँ प्रयोग नहीं कर सकता इन येट अनदर एग्जाम्पल वीरदास मॉक्स द रेवरेंस फॉर काउज इन हिंदुइज्म सजेस्टिंग दैट नॉट कंज्यूमिंग बीफ मेक्स हिंदूज अनप्रोग्रेसिव 
like it is important to recognize that dietary restriction both as a matter of choice and those based on religious spiritual and cultural beliefs exist worldwide but singling out hindus for not consuming beef demonstrates the bias so apne aastha ya manta ka samman rakhne vrat rakhna ho ya kuch prakar ka aahar ka tyag karna ho aisi shraddha sabhi pramukh dharmon mein hai par hasya ke manch se keval hindu dharm ko andhshraddhalu और तर्कहीन बताना इन कलाकारों का पक्षपात प्रदर्शित करता है तो दिस वेर फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स हाउ हिंदूज आर प्रोजेक्ट इलॉजिकल एंड सुपरस्टिशियस इन द स्टैंड द फिफ्थ मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट ट्रोप आइडेंटिफाइड इज यूज ऑफ प्रोपोगेंडा डिह्यूमनाइजेशन डेमोनाइजिंग टेक्निक्स अगेंस्ट हिंदू एंड हिंदुजम सो कुनाल कामरा इन द स्टैंड एक्ट रिफर्स टू हिंदूज साइक्रेटिंग जय माता दी एज अनसाइंटिफिक वेल नरेटिंग एंड प्रोकलैप्टिक स्टोरी वेल द साइंटिफिक नेचर ऑफ एनी चैंट कैन बी डिबेटेड Labeling it as unscientific can be seen as uh, propagandist techniques aimed at portraying Hindus who rely on chanting during challenging period as inherently irrational. So, in another example, Munawar Faruqi narrates uh, communal incidents uh, that is the 2002 Godhra riots while deliberately ignoring primary victims, Hindus, and refraining from highlighting their experience of religious conflict. So the intentional omission paints an incomplete and biased picture aiming to demonize hindus and portray them solely as oppressors disregarding their own status as primary victims aise hi kai hasyakar apne jokes mein hindu ka manavya karan karte hain aur hindu ki chhavi ko dandavya karan kar unke utpidan ko aur samaj mein utpidak ke roop mein prastut karte hain we observe the recurring pattern so of techniques employed by this stand up comedians where they tend to overlook downplay ridicule and trivialize to some extent or dismiss the genuine concern faced by hindu community in today's india humor of such nature means still fear and apprehension towards hindu thereby robbing them of their dignity so an example of how these jokes play out in the public discourse is evident in the case of terrorist adil ahmedar he is a 90 he was a 19 year old terrorist who carried out the terrorist attack on paramilitary forces in pulwama in 2019 so a video of him was released after the attack where he is is been seen documented saying that you cow fish drinkers don't have a chance to stand against us so like i would here want to quote uh, madhu uh, madhu kishwar ji uh, she is a well known indian academic commentator recently on a public platform she presented uh, it really well she said that uh, if there is an endangered species on this earth it is hindu of the subcontinent in the last 1000 years the area from afghanistan to bali was of this indic hindu civilization hindus have already lost 80% of uh, this and are confined to 20% even this 20% that is left is endangered in the guise of secularism i think she is absolutely right in the name of freedom of speech and secularism primarily the hindus and their civilizational history falls victim to being a joke in the stand up comedy there may not be direct consequences of these jokes but the long term implication of hindu phobic stand up comedy are far reaching and deeply concerning it gradually fosters disconnect and disillusionment among hindus and their own traditions instilling a sense of disregard self loathing and self pity our findings suggest that this research can serve as a valuable framework for analyzing other popular culture towards uh, like portrayal of hindus and hinduism such as on televisions films advertisers and memes and even in social media content so like the power of humor is immense it can uplift unite and bring joy but it can also perpetuate stereotypes hero identities and fuel prejudice by shedding light on hinduism in comedy we aim to initiate this crucial conversation that encourages sensitivity empathy and understanding in our increasingly diverse and interconnected world i would like to end with a profound quote by karnan mm-hmm. like if you want to bring down a nation without firing a single bullet then and dilute their culture tradition and history thus orchestrating the society's destruction from within like as we reflect in our finding we recognize the immense power and impact of stand up comedy as a cultural force it has the power to shape opinions alter perspective and influence societal norms however with this power comes great responsibility as it is said a nation is only as strong as its cultural fabric uh, i would like to hand it over to nindi ma'am from here thank you uh, so much avinash for laying out very clearly with some examples 
from our sample data set as to how Hindus and Hinduism are represented in Indian stand-up comedy. I would like to add to what Avinash has, say, has said with a few more examples. So apart from the tropes that were discussed by Avinash, and these were identified as five major tropes that were found with respect to the representation of Hindus and Hinduism in Indian stand-up comedy, there are also some additional techniques and tropes that we found through our sample set. For example, stand-up comedians very consistently attempt to erase and silence the Hindu view of history. How do they do so? So, for example, they don't talk about the vandalization and the destruction of Hindu temples by uh, invading forces. They don't talk about the attacks that Hindus faced during major events in India's history, for example, the partition, uh, many communal riots that have happened during India's history. Whenever they bring up the topic of love jihad, they always try to dismiss love jihad, they always try to underplay love jihad, uh, and they try to present uh, love jihad as something that is a figment of imagination of the Hindu mind. Now, what you see as a very prominent technique in Indian stand-up comedy is that they are borrowing a lot from mainstream Indian media discourse on Hindus and Hinduism. You will find that what stand-up comedy has to tell us about Hinduism is what uh, mainstream Indian media, left liberal media also talks about Hinduism and the template is almost very similar. In this context, we can also in, uh, analyze and evaluate how Western media represents Hindus and Hinduism uh, and how this template is almost imitated by Indian stand-up comedy. Uh, then you can also find a lot of imbalance in the kind of sources that Indian stand-up comedians use while joking. Now, we can primarily think of the fact that jo jokes don't have to be backed up by sources. But when stand-up comedians talk about communal rights, and there are a lot of stand-up comedy routines, which mentioned the Godra riots. But here, the stand-up comedians only highlight the Muslim victims, but they fail to mention the Hindu victims of these communal uh, riots. Thirdly, there is, a, there is a technique which stand-up comedians employ, which is to deny uh, the threats to Hindu identity and civilization from Abrahamic faiths attacks from neighboring countries, the problem of illegal immigrants that India is facing. So the technique is to ridicule, deny, trivialize, and ignore, but also minimize the kind of threats that Hindus uh, face today. For example, when Kunal Kamra says, Hindu khatre mein nahi hai, logic khatre mein. Which means that if there are genuine fears and concerns that Hindus in this country feel strongly about, such stand-up comedians uh, work to deny it, to ignore it, to try to trivialize it, and also to undermine it. A lot of uh, stand-up comedy acts, because we analyze stand-up comedy acts from the time period 2015 to 2021, but uh, we also limited our data sample to stand-up comedy acts in Hindi and English only. So definitely there is a lot of scope for future research in this area where stand-up comedy in other regional languages, which is now being consumed at a greater scale through OTT platforms, through social media, etc., uh, can be analyzed. So you see a lot of stand-up comedians projecting Hindus as aggressors, attributing the violence that is committed during communal rights like situations only to the Hindu community. For example, the chant Jai Shri Ram. Stand-up comedians try and project what mainstream media also projects, that Jai Shri Ram is like a war chant and it is used to oppress, uh, demonize and terrorize Hindus. They also uh, have ended up equating Hindu festivals like Navratri and Uttrayan and their celebration with communal uh, tension. Uh, Stand-up comedians also employ cultural appropriation because they don't elaborate, they don't present any context to Hindu history, but they only try to simplify it because probably that is what brings out laughter from the audience. 
so for example there is lot of inappropriate description between the relate about the relationship between lakshman and mata sita uh, the there is no uh, discussion about the hindu roots of yog hindu greetings jai sri ram is modified for the purpose of laughter to balekum shri ram etc so these are some examples that uh, we found from our data sample uh, also there is a lot of false equivalence that stand up comedians uh, employ for example they equate the rss with isis they equate the jamaat with sang they equate the death ceremony with the threat ceremony so they not only make a lot of factual errors while they uh, joke about hindus and hinduism but they also try to provoke and they do so by promoting a lot of false equivalence one important technique that was found from our data sample being prominently used by stand up comics was that hindus are equated with a particular political party in this case the bhartiya janata party and also equated as followers and the bhakts of uh, a particular political leader namely the prime minister of india mr narendra modi so anybody who carries a saffron flag is dangerous uh, a bhakt roommate according to a stand up comedian must be slapped because he is a bhakt and he supports a particular political party any hindu who opposes beef consumption is a militant um, is a terrorist and uh, they must be uh, stood up against and people uh, who burst firecrackers on diwali should be slapped so uh, the nature of some of these jokes where there is a clear demonstration of propaganda dehumanization and demonization of hindus there is a political technique that is being used to do so where uh, pejorative and derisive comments are being made about bjp supporters and bjp supporters are equated to hindus are equated to being bhaks and hindus are also constantly blamed for the backward status of uh, indian minorities and uh, for example one stand up comedian says that how can somebody who is a bjp karyakarta equal to a hindu have anything to do with uh, women empowerment Uh, lastly there is a lot of use of illustrations and symbolism that indian stand up comedians use to talk about hinduism to joke about uh, hinduism for example in a stand up comedy act the comedian is performing ganpati dance to uh, send out the message that ganpati dance is vulgar uh, veer das in one of his well known stand up comic acts performs yoga poses gives these yoga poses a very funny name and does these yoga poses in a very comical way there are stand up comedy acts where mantras are mimic and the comedian is also claiming that saffron is equal to suspectful intention and violence so as avinash has uh, rightfully offered conclusion to our research uh, i would like to end by saying that there is uh, we started this as a very pre preliminary kind of a study because uh, when we were reviewing literature on the media representations of hindu and Hin hindus and hinduism we found that there is a dire need for academic work to be done in this area but stand up comedy is one genre one form of pop culture which is extremely popular liked by young indians on different kind of platforms and these stand up comedians are also influencers who can very easily impact young minds and their perceptions about a deeply complicated layered and nuanced topic such as religion uh, so because there was no study on how indian stand up comedy which is a rising pop culture phenomenon projects uh, hinduism we decided to take up take this up as a rigorous academic work but of course there is scope to study other forms of pop culture such as films meme content television uh, ott platforms uh, if all of us are aware there is a lot of discussion already in the public domain about how ott platforms and uh, web series talk about hindus and hinduism and what kind of narratives they uh, employ uh, with re with regard to the representation of hindus and hinduism of course 
we also uh, would like future research to employ different methods to offer some measurable insights, explore the case study approach, but that is all about academic and research aspects. But definitely this is the start of long drawn deep conversation on how pop culture represents Hindus and Hinduism and uh, the kind of content that we are consuming as a civilization, as a uh, people of Bharat and uh, what this means for us as a society. So this is our research team. It was led by Professor Ramesh Rao, uh, myself, Dr. Nidhi, uh, Avinash and Ruti, who are former students, alumni of the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda. And currently we are exploring publication avenues for our paper. Thank you everyone for a patient listening and uh, we are open to any comments, observations, and questions that you may have. Namaste. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, both the speakers, though I joined a little later. So therefore, if uh, my question has already been covered, uh, you have to excuse me for that. My question is, you know, in the context of freedom of expression, you know, freedom of speech, enshrined in our, uh, you know, constitution and, you know, upheld by Supreme Court in various uh, circumstances. And also a lot of thinkers, you know, like, for example, if I quote Dr. Anand Ranganathan, he always is a swear by uh, freedom of, I will fight, you know, like that he, uh, he says. So how do we, how do we fight this menace of uh, stand-up comedians denigrating and whatever you have explained all these uh, what can be done? How to protect the youngsters, impressionable age youngsters? This is my concern and question. Thank you. And and it's my pleasure to uh, answer the questions. But And it's a very important uh, observation about, about speech. Uh, after all, uh, that's what distinguishes human beings. Our, our ability to create words with words. And if someone is to proscribe and prescribe, how do we respond? Now we have in the modern context, because what Dr. Ananda Ranganathan or any of the free speech absolutists, as we call mm -hmm. them, say is that, look, once we take the first step towards curbing or proscribing certain speech, it's a slippery slope. Who decides what is right? Who decides what is allowable speech and so on? And that is, of course, a, a very important question. But that is a fairly new kind of a challenge because every society has had certain prescriptions and proscriptions. Because every society needs for its stability certain kinds of rules. And that's why we have the Dharma Shastras, for, for example, right? These traditions really say, ah, what can you do? What can you not do? And in what context? And unless we realize, and this is, let me give you an example of where speech can undermine, defeat, destroy carefully built worlds that have offered not merely some kind of an emotional solace, but which has been the foundation for building civilizations. And this is where Dr. Balagangadara talks about, about his first experience when the Shivalinga, you know, which for all Hindus, maybe most Hindus, symbolize this powerful image of the cosmic, you know, reality. He says, once someone says, oh, this is nothing but a depiction of the penis. What happens? Suddenly that word of the cosmic, of the profound, of the devotional gets reduced to something that is 
almost purposeless or devious or crude. No. So, I mean, if, if we really want to look at, and this is where, for example, we even mentioned this in our article about uh, Vatsyayana, uh, one of the early philosophers who says, what are the good aspects of speech and the bad aspects of speech? So in every small community, the elders would say, ah, what do you joke about? Why do you joke about certain things? So it was not as if, because freedom should not be mistaken for license. Because once you have go down that road, then it's destruction because there is no one to control. There is no one really, because there is no authority. And if and this is where Dr. Ranganathan and others, you know, and, and to some extent, I kind of lean towards more free speech, but always are, should be concerned because without self-control, you know, individuals can destroy themselves and without self-control, society can be destroyed. And, and, and how do we therefore manage this without really going down the kind of authoritarian state road? You know, you see what happens. You know, I, I just saw yesterday a, a really, you know, powerful and, and depressing video of a teacher being flogged in Afghanistan because he sought to teach young girls. So there is, there is the danger that if we restrict free speech mindlessly or to protect our own powerful, whatever, you know, presence in society, then there is that possibility. And so again, <laughs> that itself, you know, this particular question itself can lead to, you know, the number of maybe treatises, <laughs> philosophical treatises on this. But in philosophy, for example, when we say philosophy, we forget one of the branches of philosophy is ethics. And the other is aesthetics. Beyond, of course, metaphysics, epistemology, and ontology. So if you go the route of ethics and aesthetics, we should be able to determine what is you know, good speech. Huh? What is enjoyable speech? Good speech in terms of ethics, enjoyable speech in terms of aesthetics. Hmm? And, and if we can, you know, maybe I should stop here because <laughs> really uh, this, is, this is a very important question uh, that, that we have to be very mindful of. Just one question from my end as well, sir. So this may be something that you could actually extrapolate from with your personal experiences more so than from the study where I basically wanted to know that uh, is the Indian audience ready to be able to receive comedy content the right way? Because I believe we give way too much importance to what comedians say. And uh, I think that also needs to go. More importantly, it's it's kind of ironical how, you know, this entire concept of punching down and punching up is talked about. But at the same time, we have a monopoly of the upper caste in the comedy scene being the successful comedians. So then how exactly what they say is not punching down, but it is punching up. But at the same time, I feel like it has a greater effect on uh, the Indian audience. Now, the American comedy scene being something that has been inspiring to most countries as to how they would want to establish this particular thing in their country. What are the salient differences between an American audience and an Indian audience? And is it that maybe we take our comedians a little too seriously? I mean, they're jokes, you know, and these people are clearly not very qualified to have opinions on the things that they're talking about. So I think we should forget it within that one particular set, but I think we carry it with us far too long. Yeah, uh, here again, uh, you have you have raised a, a, a dissertation level topic. <laughs> one could write, you know, uh, hundreds if not thousands of pages about it. Uh, it's very important to kind of recognize this idea about humor being used as social commentary. Hmm? 
humor being used as ideological approaches to social justice, social engineering. Therefore, you know, your question, how powerful are these narratives? Hmm? We can, of course, use a variety of theoretical lenses to kind of say, ah, and, but we have, you know, to some extent, gone the data collection route. We are not simply making up these things. We all commonsensically know these have some effects, but we have tried to carefully collect data so that we can make a point, but we cannot make all of the points completely because there is so much else going on. So in terms of whether they have an effect, you can take up something like Gerbner's cultivation and analysis and look at the kinds of things. The more people watch certain things, the more they believe it is reality. So if you can just extend that, what, what can happen to those who listen to these kinds of jokes, quote unquote, is that you know people can get deracinated, oh, you know, completely removed away from culture or begin to distance themselves. Oh my goodness, you know, look at who we are. Or if we are, or if Hindu, you know, issues, Hindus are being mocked or, you know, dismissed or is even considered unworthy, surely that has an effect on the young who may not know as much about the reasons why there are certain practices. What is the value of practices? What is the value of disciplined thinking? What is the you know importance of ritual? Because most people, and here again, I think it is not just that you know the upper caste or uh, you know it is the anglicized, already deracinated group that is providing most of such humor. So now very quickly to American or European context, we now have begun to see the complete opposite where you cannot make fun of blacks or of women or of Muslims, especially of Muslims. And in fact, one of the responses that we got to our journal article, they mentioned, oh, there are jokes about Christians, there are jokes about Jews, but they did not mention jokes about Muslims and Islam because they clearly know the kinds of effects that, you know, and very clear, as we can see what is happening in the US right now and Europe after the uh, October 7th events. So no one is making jokes about Muslims, even though stand-up comedians have the opportunity of making it. So this is fascinating to observe, to see how humor has been used for political ends for social, seeking social justice, for social engineering. And that is a real problem. And when we have an audience as wide ranging as we have in India, from the very, very sophisticated, quote unquote, in terms of anglicized, westernized, very much uh, knowledgeable about Western traditions, English and so on. And those from, you know, you know, maybe a rural, uh, uneducated group who now have access from their cell phones to the kind of comedic presentations, then you can see there are all, there will be all kinds of effects. There have already been all kinds of effects. And that I think is very important for us to keep in mind. May I just respond to Karnik Ji's question? Yeah, Namaste Karnik Ji. I think that was a very pertinent question. A uh, freedom of speech is being discussed, debated from all kinds of lenses, constitutional, political, legal, social, etc. But even the constitution does not give absolute freedom of speech, which all of us acknowledge. And there are limitations placed on uh, freedom of speech, such that your exercise of freedom of speech cannot cause harm to societal order, the integrity of the nation, to the uh, to the communal relationship between people, etc. So that is clearly well laid out in our constitution itself. I personally see not just stand-up comedy, but stand-up comedy is just an extension of different kind of pop culture formats 
already impacting a lot of our young people. Now, what can be done is that first we need to open this up for discussion. Because we have not discussed this in our public domains, in our classrooms, in our media spaces, in our policy and government spaces for a long, long time. So the first thing that we need to do is just discuss different representations of different communities in different pop culture formats. And second, uh, in the public domain, we already see a lot of counter uh, happening to these stand up comics or to OTT platforms or to Bollywood films, etc. Not uh, resorting to means of violence, but resorting to litigation. So there are a lot of groups or well-meaning individuals who have taken this up, taken these matters up legally. And uh, they have also tried to engage with these uh, stand-up performers in a civil way, uh, trying to understand why Hindus and Hinduism have become a constant target of their jokes when they leave out other faith groups uh, very conveniently. Uh, so there are a lot of collectives, a lot of groups, individuals, peoples, uh, people, organizations who are making the effort to bring it to the notice of the public space, of the courts, of the government, bring it to the notice of academics, uh, etc. that this is what is happening and this must be countered. First, this must be discussed and second, it must be countered legally. So if I find something objectionable, I can go and file a PIL, I can go and file a litigation and then I can take it up. That way it gets that uh, space. Uh, the most immediate thing also is to produce our own content as Hindus, as uh, people from the Indic ecosystem. We also need to churn out our own stand-up comedy. So we are not saying that stand-up comedy should be banned or young people should stop watching stand-up comedy. But we also need to create content uh, because we have social media, we have OTT platforms, we have producers who are ready to invest money. Uh, into content creation from our side. So if uh, there can be stand-up comedy that makes fun and targets Hindus, fine. We can have stand-up comedy that builds on the uh, Hindu discourse very positively and offers our young people uh, another perspective. This can be done with films. This can be done with uh, internet content. This can be done with advertisements. This could be done with TV serials and all forms of uh, pop culture. Uh, so that is uh, my response to your question and a brief response to OJSPG's question. Even we uh, sometimes think that what is the impact that these stand-up comedians can have? But you just look at the election debates uh, in 2014 and 2019. A lot of the so-called independent media platforms, they gave space to these stand-up comedians to discuss election issues, election results, election narratives, etc. So I don't think that these are only stand-up comedians. They are there for a particular purpose. Their job is to set the narrative and they are just doing their job. Uh, it is only today that we are looking at the role played by Bollywood films, Hindi films, critically. We can think of, okay, what is the role of a Bollywood film? Uh, it doesn't create much impact. People go to a film theater and they watch and they forget. But we know that is not what is happening. And pop culture has been used very systematically to spread a particular ideology, to build a particular narrative, and to deracinate people and disconnect them from their, from their religious and civilizational ethos. Now that we are looking at Hindi films, pop music, Hindi TV serials, advertisements critically, uh, the same lens should be applied at uh, stand-up comedy. And since our young people are now on social media and these stand-up comedians are also influencers. So uh, I may be a young person watching this stand-up comedian and I may take his or her view about policy issues, about social justice issues very seriously. And I am not being exposed to content from an alternate perspective at all. That is when it becomes a little bit concerning. And that is why this is what, what they do is not just humor. These are not just jokes. Uh, this is something that can deeply impact us as a country, as a civilization, as a community. And the difference between those people and the comedians that we are talking about now is that those people were educated. 
they actually knew the culture that they were born in. They could make fun of bits of it and still respect other bits of it. I think what we are fighting is a bunch of, well, if I may say so, not very bright and not very educated people, but very dangerous. Yeah, you know, um, I think uh, when we presented our paper in Germany, one of the scholars from Israel was, was very impressed. And he said, look, you have on your hands now so many ways of pursuing your research. Uh, you guys should be, you know, seeking some very, very large grants from universities, from governments or for whoever to pursue this research because he found in, you know, the, the kind of heuristic value, as we say in, in, in uh, academe, of our work. So there is, you know, I mean, initially, I, I, I remember starting back in the 1980s when Indian students came to the U.S. to do research on media, it was mostly content analysis, very simplistic content analysis of what kinds of ads appeared in the Times of India, what kinds of, you know, and so on which has now, you know, later on, I took it to, you know, maybe a, a different level when I looked at the kinds of content in the New York Times and the Washington Post in their coverage of India. So I looked at their editorials and opinion pieces. We have followed that up. But similarly, here, there is, there is just a whole wide variety of both Indian traditional theories that can be used, as well as a you know, the whole variety of Western theories. You know, I, I mentioned a few that we can leverage to, to kind of do some really interesting work and not be defensive about it. And this is where I think academia has also become so politicized. We know this. We have seen where the Harvard president has been dismissed, like, you know, uh, where every top university in the U.S. is now rife with political conflict. So, that is something, you know, we, so we don't want to go that road because that is nothing but political gamesmanship. So, but we have a lot of wonderful opportunities here to do some very interesting work. I think that's a terrific note to leave the talk on. Uh, Nidish, do you have something to add to it? Yes. First of all, thank you, Jayji, for your comments and suggestions. Uh, I think there is uh, some very wonderful work happening with regard to the crisis in Indian education, Indian higher education, and how uh, the current set of Indian education has been impacted by colonization. I think Sahana Singhji has done wonderful work in that regard. I would just like to add that we only limited our study to the jokes that were made on religion. Uh, but Indian stand-up comedy is a very wide landscape. And Hindi and English are prominent languages in which uh, Indian stand-up comedians do their presentations. Uh, but I think Hindi is emerging as a very major uh, counter force to English anglicized stand-up comedy, as we may call it. And there are a lot of other issues that Indian stand-up comedians are picking up. For example, they are talking about jobs, they are talking about marriage. They're talking about civil services, etc. So they're talking about a lot of uh, very meaningful issues that impact India. And uh, we could also look at regional stand-up comedy, comedy happening in Gujarati, Malayalam, Maithili, Haryandi, etc. And I, I, I believe that these are the counter forces to these anglicized stand-up uh, comedians. Because when I look at, even cursorily when I look at their stand-up comedy comments, uh, stand-up comedy routines, they, they talk about a lot of sensitive issues, but they do it very respectfully. They are not demeaning. And they address a wide range of audience who can relate to them because they are generating comedy, generating humor, joking in their own language. Uh, so we have to uh, look at these aspects and further research into this area can also look at how regional language stand-up comedy is also a very prominent counter force to this kind of uh, stand-up comedy. But many thanks for your suggestions. Yeah, very quickly, I think, I think uh, this is very important to acknowledge that the comedy scene in India is very rich. As a Kannadiga coming from Bengaluru, I know there are just some fantastic comedians. 
So it, it, this is where, you know, when, when Jay Bhai talks about Indian education, one of the biggest challenges in India is simply the lack of knowledge of ourselves. We tend to be focused on our own language, on our own region, so that we don't even bother to know who are some of the best writers, best literatures, you know, in another part of India. <laughs> so I think there are there are a number of things here that, that we can uh, discuss. But yeah, yeah it, is, it is important for us to therefore continue to use these lenses available to us to study a variety of this so that we can enrich, you know, uh, and not simply go down that terrible academic route of making everything difficult, but to kind of say, ah, what is happening? And what are the interesting aspects of, of this? Thank you very much, sir, for uh, providing us with that uh, conclusion. I think uh, in the evolution of Indian comedy, it is extremely important that we remember the right people and celebrate the right people. On that note, I think uh, we can bid adieu to our viewers. Thank you very much, sir. We hope to have uh, several such talks with all four of our speakers today. Namaste. Namaste.